What's going on guys? Showtime checking in once again with part 2 of my homage to Resident Evil Director's Cut. With Resident Evil 7 right around the corner and a remake of the second one in the works, it's no surprise that fans everywhere are rejoicing and expressing their excitement all over the internet. Last time, I covered the game's backstory and the two main playable characters, Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. This time around, I'll be going over two unplayable but integral characters, Barry Burton and Albert Wesker. If you've entered into the series during the modern era with Resident Evil Revelations and need to brush up on the roots of the lore of Resident Evil, then look no further as this video will be rich in the overall story and plot twists. Let's start out by looking at the warm and fuzzy Barry. You've once again entered the world of survival horror. Good luck. Yeah! Barry Burton! Probably my favorite NPC of the entire franchise. Although you can play as him in other Resident Evil games such as Gaiden for the Game Boy and Revelations 2 for the PS3 and PS4, he started his career as being the main supporting character to Jill. Run, Jill! He's insane! What the hell? Let's report this to Wesker! He is mostly known for people's favorite Jill sandwich scene. You know the one when he saves Jill from a preeminent doom from the crushing ceiling above! What a swell guy! Can I just touch up on something while we're on the subject? Since when did everyone start saying Jill Sandwich? If you listen closely, you can clearly hear that Barry is saying Jibble Sandwich. You were almost a Jill Sandwich. Say it with me, folks. Jibble Sandwich. Do people get stubborn and be like, well, since her name is Jill, it would just be better to change it to saying Jill instead of Jibble. Jill, 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 sandwich. Jill sounds better, and we can surely get away with this greatest conspiracy in Resident Evil history. Okay, okay. Sorry, I'm very touchy about that because he clearly doesn't say Jill. You can hear the butt in there. But everywhere you look, people refer to it as the Jill sandwich scene. Stand back! <clears throat> Grab my hand! <clears throat> The remake doesn't even use the line, Jill Sandwich. That was a close one. A second late, you would have fit nicely into a sandwich. So it drives me absolutely nuts that the fan base decided to take liberty in that quote. I guess some people that weren't sure about it, let it catch like wildfire. But it's okay, it's okay. I just need to get off my chest. I digress. Back to Barry, shall we? Before serving as Jill's so-called sugar daddy, Barry was actually in the Air Force with Chris Redfield. After leaving the Air Force, Barry joined STARS. Let it be known that Barry is a talented weapons expert and gun enthusiast, further backing this up by being a member of the NRA. If you remember the owner of the Kendo Gun Shop, Robert, in Resident Evil 2, Barry and him were actually close friends who spent quality time together at the old fishing pond. Robert's brother, Joe Kendo, was an expert at modifying weapons and was the weapons instructor for STARS. Due to these connections, Barry had Joe modify most of the STARS arsenal, including his Magnum, to fire .40 S&W caliber rounds. But don't you worry, girly. I have this. Barry acts shady throughout most of the game, and leaves you scratching your head. What's up with this guy? What makes this work is that Barry seems like a trustworthy, likable character, so when you find him talking to himself... Uh, hi, Barry. I, I heard someone talking. So you heard it too. I think I'm getting old. It seems that talking to myself is becoming a habit. Talking to yourself? And randomly popping up... In the weirdest of places. Jill! Some issues of trust start to arise. Jill, you're here too. Yes, you're here too? Look, uh, I lost my way. 
Throughout the game, you are able to make decisions based around this concept, and they are themed around whether you trust Barry enough to stick together, such as waiting for Barry to get you that rope he promised. Hey, what's going on? How I've done it. Sorry, Jill. Wait, I'll go and get another rope. Barry? Barry? Or having him tag along with you in the underground. Depending on how you see things, there are different endings, including Barry's demise. What happened? Uh, uh, I'm really embarrassed. I was clumsy. Which is triggered by acts of not trusting Barry. This essentially allows you to learn the truth of what's really going on early in the game. Barry is working for Wesker, a spy for Umbrella who is in control of Barry's actions because Wesker is claiming to have Barry's family hostage and threatens to harm them if Barry doesn't do everything Wesker says. Wesker? You did a fine job, Barry. Just as I thought. I think you should stay away from Barry, Jill. I hear that his wife and two daughters will be in danger if he doesn't do everything I tell him to. Barry is just a pawn for Wesker and is not truly aligned with evil, and once Jill sees this, she is able to trust Barry once more. Other than the underground, Barry can die in the lab, where he explains to you the plot, but you can't take him with you for the best ending. It's you. Barry? I'm really embarrassed to see you now. Just, just leave me. Go, go quickly. In any scenario that Barry dies, he hands over his family photo with a note on the back addressed to Myra and Polly, Barry's two daughters. Please give this photo to my family, will you? Sure. A little fun fact for you guys. Myra is actually a playable character in Resident Evil Revelations 2. You remember her, she's the one with the flashlight that nobody really wanted to play as. Forgive me, Jill. My God! Let's move on! This assumes that Barry predicted the worst outcome for himself to have a letter like this prepared. The best ending is achieved by making all the right moves in trusting Barry because technically he's not truly evil and this helps his conscience. Barry proceeds to knock out Wesker in the famous cutscene where Wesker reveals his true identity and intentions resulting in Barry living to the end of the game. Better yet, I'm going to show you the tyrant. Oh. Barry! Sorry, Jill. How is your family? Uh, I was listening to what you and Wesker were talking about. I wish I realized it earlier. I thought it must have something to do with Umbrella, you know. So it's all been masterminded by him. But it's good that you know that now. Barry explains his obligatory situation, and we can all breathe a sigh of relief that Barry is indeed a good guy. That's my Barry. Oh, Albert Wesker, the coolest and most stylish mastermind in the Resident Evil universe, never takes off his glasses unless he wants you to see his crazy eyes which is never in this game. There is a huge backstory of Wesker, but I won't go into detail about it in this video because it's not relevant to the first game. To make a long story short, Albert was a part of the Wesker Children Project by Umbrella and was considered to be at the top of his class, surpassing the other Wesker experiments. Each child in the project had a surname of Wesker. This led Albert to the Umbrella Executive Training Center under Dr. James Marcus for a leadership position within the company. After the training center was closed down, Wesker was transferred to the Arclay Laboratory as one of the mansion's chief researchers. This is where Wesker was researching the T-Virus, which inevitably led to the creation of the Tyrant. Wesker later joined STARS to be a double agent for Umbrella, leaking whatever information the Raccoon City Police Department had on the Arclay Laboratory experiments to Umbrella. This all preceded the mansion incident. After reports of people being slain in the woods, Star's Bravo team was dispatched to investigate. 
Wesker used Bravo Team's invasion as an opportunity to gather battle data for the BOWs, an acronym for Bio-Organic Weapon, that were a part of the T-Virus experiments. Eventually, given that Wesker was the leader of the STARS Alpha Team, he and his unit came in shortly after Bravo Team's reluctance to communicate, setting worry to the rest of the STARS members. This brings us to the start of the game, where we see Wesker as being a leader for STARS with no actual idea that he's behind all of this. What a fucker! Throughout the game, the player might get fishy feelings that Wesker's up to something. Chris, you're alive. My words exactly. Where's Jill? Aren't you with Jill? I'm sorry. We were attacked by a strange monster. I lost track of her while we were scouting around. I hope she's okay. But it's never quite clear until the end, when he holds you at gunpoint, as he spills the beans on the entire conspiracy. Is this? That's right. This is the ultimate life form. Tyrant! Wesker's main mission was to eliminate the STARS unit and blackmail Barry Burton to ensure its fruition, as well as dispose of any evidence against Umbrella and their horrid experiments. <laughs> Chris? <laughs> Stop it! Wesker, you're pitiful. This is your savior? You say this failure is your savior? In the end, Wesker injected himself with the prototype virus before meeting up with Chris and Jill in the lab. You can make sure yourself whether Tyrant is a failure or not. After showing them the ultimate bioweapon, the Tyrant, he allowed it to kill him, so the virus could resuscitate his body and be revived as a SUPERHUMAN! This is Wesker's origin of having superhuman powers, such as increased strength and agility in the future Resident Evil games. As the remaining STARS members escaped the mansion before the explosion, so did Wesker, taking whatever research and remaining data from Umbrella before he managed to make his escape! Ooh. Wesker has been recognized as the series' main antagonist, with Chris Redfield considered the other side of the coin as the main protagonist. He has always had an eye on Chris for his ways of excelling in almost everything he does, and fear that Chris might figure out the truth and try to stop him. Wesker was popularized by his cool and calm demeanor with a mixture of his slick hairstyle, sunglasses, and traitoristic ways. He is seen throughout the series further advancing the plot and agendas of Umbrella and his own means. A truly evil character and perhaps the mastermind of all that has happened in the world of Resident Evil. <coughs> wow guys, that sure was a mouthful. So now we know that Wesker is the main antagonist of the series and Barry, well, quite the contraire. I know I said that I was going to talk about Rebecca Chambers in the last video, but I've decided to start her in part 3, where she leads the charge in the remaining cast members, Enrico Marini, Richard Aiken, Forrest Speyer, Kenneth J. Sullivan, and Joseph Frost. If you haven't seen part 1 of my homage to Resident Evil Director's Cut, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comments and leave a like if you enjoyed it or thought that it was informative. Don't forget to share, and please remember to subscribe to The Baddest Dudes if you haven't done so already. If you're curious about what's going on with Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 2 Remake, definitely go subscribe to Jace Cotter, as he's covering any new information about those games. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description as well. Thanks as always guys for watching The Baddest Dudes, Showtime, check in now.